Stand by. Good morning once again. Welcome back to the Made Right in Milan, where we continue our discussion this morning on the significant flooding that has taken place not only in the Quad Cities, but in areas outside of the Quad Cities. Really, a lot of our smaller rivers have had significant flooding and up and down the Mississippi River. Well, during the last commercial break, we had a couple of things, you know, you know come up and uh, you guys mentioned a couple of things. You know, there is help available for people out there. So let's talk about how these people can get some help. And you said there are a couple of meetings coming up, a couple of agencies coming together just a little bit. Right. We have a long-term recovery committee here in the Quad Cities, and that really is so many agencies and groups and organizations and companies that are coming together and gathering resources and figuring out what's available. And in a couple weeks, we'll have a both on the Illinois and Iowa side is kind of our plan that people can come to this yes. area. It'll be a flood assistance center. They can come in. We'll do casework. We'll work with them, see what resources they have and what they need, and then we'll be able to refer and match them up with their needs. So it really will be a great thing to help our community and so many organizations helping with that. So that's coming up. I know there's a big benefit concert also planned in June. Uh, I know how people are in the Quad Cities and we're going to hear a lot of these things, you know, a lot of these benefits coming up. So I'd encourage everybody to check that out and, you know, help in any way you can. And we also have some 800 numbers available yeah, that a, you wanted to mention. I have a website for you. It's floods2019.iowa.gov. Again, floods2019.iowa.gov. And then there's a couple phone numbers. If you want to apply for assistance, it's 1-800-621-3362. And that would be more like that $5,000 grant that I talked to earlier, talked about earlier. And then um, if anybody's having maybe distress from the flood, um, there's the Iowa Concern Hotline. And it's 1-800-447-1985. Uh, 1-800-447-1985. So those are some resources, and I'm sure that over time we'll probably have more resources available too. And, and I'm glad you mentioned there, if people are having distress, um, you know, this really can take an emotional toll on people. And I imagine a lot of your volunteers are hearing a lot of these stories because you're in touch with a lot of families and this has to be one of the most stressful things that they've ever gone through. It really is. And we do have trained mental health volunteers that are out in the community now working with people. And, you know, it's something as simple as a rain shower can really, you know, bring that stress back on them because they worry again the levels are going up. But think about being displaced, having children, pets, all these things you're trying to cope with and then you can't get into your home. So there is both with responders and with those affected, a lot of mental health, uh, you know, just coping things that are really hard to do. So that's an issue and we're really aware of that and working on that piece. And I assume again, you know, you, you wanna jump in, like yeah, it, it's very important though, we do need to think is, about it. You know, part of the thing that you were talking about, you know, once the flood hits now, the cleanup starts. And so there are volunteers, I'm gonna give you this number too. Um, the uh, persons who are impacted by this, by this flood, um, if they need cleanup services, there's a number that they can call. And I'm going to give you the number. It's 563-484-3086. Let me do that one more time. 563-484-3086. And these are people, um, the income, I mean, the guidelines would be 200% below the poverty level, you know, if you need that help. Um, this is from the Community Action of Eastern Iowa via Iowa Individual Assistance Program. So they can access this and get the help that they need. Okay. And you mentioned even like cleaning supplies, that kind cleaning of stuff. Cleaning supplies, all those kinds of things. You bet, you bet. So, I assume so. Are you guys taking donations right now? And if you, I mean, how does that we work? We have cleanup kits available. Okay, we you take financial donations, but we have cleanup kits available. Salvation Army does. And at that resource center I mentioned, okay. there'll be lots of cleaning supplies, you know, bleach, mess gloves, everything, because yeah. it is dangerous cleaning it up. I mean, yeah. the water's contaminated, and a lot you have of, to be careful, so yeah. And at a lot of these houses, it's not like they're cleaning up after a right. couple inches of water. Right. It's a so few, if not several feet of yeah. water that's been inside. All right, there's plenty more coming up from the Maid Ride in Milan as we continue this discussion on the big time flooding that we've had around the Quad Cities. A lot more to do. We'll be here until 7 o'clock this morning. And again, we encourage you, come on down, stop in, say hi. You can pick up one of the coffee mugs here. 
here, made right on one side, local four on the other, and we'll get you set up with one of those. It looks like this stack, there, there are still some of those over there, and uh, we look forward to checking you out and chatting with you a little bit here this morning. So we'll go ahead and send it back to Ash in the studio. I believe Ash has a weather update for us. And fortunately, no heavy rain in the forecast, and Ash, things starting to look up a little bit for the weekend. Yeah, they really are, Andy. Uh, things got very fortunate yesterday with uh, just only the moderate rainfall that we saw and uh, just a few storms and a lot of the heavy stuff stayed off towards the east. And now as we go through the day today, we have a cooler day on the backside of it because of it. So today will be cooler, but as Andy said, the weekend doesn't look too, too bad. Uh, right now, this time of year, we're supposed to be into the lower 70s. As we get through the middle part of May here, uh, that's where temperatures really should be hanging around. But uh, unfortunately for the majority of us, we're going to be looking at temperatures more like that of mid-April here for at least a few days before things do really start getting better. Today, 57, uh, that's definitely on the cooler side of things, more like early April. And then as we look out towards Friday, Saturday, Sunday, lower 60s. That's going to come with more sunshine. That sunshine is going to feel really nice, but and uh, we are really drying out. That's the that's the good news. A little bit of rain there on Sunday, and we're right back into the upper 60s by Monday, and then even some 70s by next week. But unfortunately, we got to wait a little bit before we get there. That low pressure system came through yesterday, made its way off towards the east and continues to this morning. And on the back side of it, we got that colder air building in there. Just a little cloud cover in our neck of the woods, trapping in that heat right now, keeping it a little more on the mild side for us. You can see some uh, heavier rain making its way all the way into Indiana here this morning, but for us uh, really starting to clear out other than some sprinkles outside because of that thicker cloud cover this morning. That low pressure is just going to continue to build off towards the north, so we get these winds coming out of the north behind it. You can see it's originating all the way up in Canada, really making things nice and cool for us here today. I mean, we're going to be looking at temperatures only climbing all the way up to the upper 50s. The cloud cover as well helping with that, not giving us that sunshine to warm us up. Good news is clouds clear out overnight tonight, late tonight into early tomorrow, so plenty of sunshine Friday. Lower 60s and sunshine should feel great. As we get into Saturday, we might have a little more cloud cover returning to the forecast, but overall, not bad for us by any means. Now, as far as the rainfall goes, Andy was mentioning it. We've been talking about it all morning. We got very lucky here the past couple of days that it wasn't any worse rainfall wise. So the forecast now kind of looks like it's still on that track of dropping down versus stalling out or going back up. So 19.6 feet here this morning. Uh, that's just about three feet less than that record we set last week. And we're going to keep on dropping off and might even make it all the way back down to moderate flood stage by the time we get to the middle part of next week, which would be amazing because really we've been about a month and a half now where we've been sitting at major flood stage 57 today and then for tonight we're going to drop back down to the lower 40s. Winds will be gusty both today and tonight, and temperatures will stay in the lower 60s through the weekend. We'll climb back to the 70s as we get to the middle part of next week, and a couple chances for rain there, one on Sunday and then one by Wednesday. Redrick? Ash, thank you. Let's get to